what time is it? So for a sale time, anticipation. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. It is time we're doing it. Sephora sale recommendations. That is what this video is going to be about. And this video specifically is going to be about the tempting, the tantalizing, the newest, the hottest newer releases that are out at Sephora. Releases that have come out since the last sale that maybe you guys have been waiting to see. Are they any good? Should I pick them up? Can I get 10, 15, 20% off this year. Well, I'm going to tell you everything that is worth it. I'm going to be putting all of these sale details in the description box down below because I think a lot of you guys already know the sale details. The sale is going to be starting this week for Rouge. And then as you guys know, the other tiers kind of open up a little bit later in the month. So I want to get this video out for you guys to hear all of my recommendations. If you guys are curious, I will link my previous videos in that description box down below. And also later this week when the sales starts, I will have another video for you guys on some of my more oldies but goodies, kind of like holy grails. So make sure you are subscribed to my channel. And without further ado, friends, let's get into my Sephora sale recs. All right, party people, I am gonna scoochie over so I can insert images and all that kind of good stuff about these items that I'm gonna be talking about today. If you like this video, don't forget to hit me up with a thumbs up. And if you are new here, welcome. Consider subscribing to my channel. My name is Sophia. I am a makeup addict. And every single week I upload new content on my channel about makeup. I do a lot of new makeup reviews and I do cover a lot of Sephora brands. So hit that subscribe button if you want to join our fam. I really tried to narrow down this list to what I thought is the best of the best things that I've tried personally that I've reviewed. We're gonna start off with foundation. This first recommendation, I was a little bit late to the party, okay? I think I picked this up in the last sale. It is none other than the House Labs Foundation. I was a little skeptical about this. I didn't pick it up when it first came out. House Labs, you know, they really didn't nail it when they first launched that brand. They had to do the whole relaunch. They came out in Sephora. I think it was a really good move for them. And I think they absolutely hit it out of the park with this foundation. It's such a beautiful everyday foundation. If you are new here, I have dry skin. It tends to be pretty dehydrated throughout the year. And this foundation just keeps my skin looking hydrated, natural, no crustiness all day, even in the winter. It has a really nice skin-like effect to the skin, but unlike a skin tint, which sometimes doesn't always have the best longevity, right? Because it's kind of like a lighter formula. This really lasts all day. I feel like it really clings to the skin. It never dries me out. It never settles into fine lines. It doesn't emphasize texture or anything like that. It just has a really beautiful kind of glowy look to the skin. It reminds me a lot of one of my favorite foundations that I'm wearing today, the Pat McGrath foundation, except just a little bit more moisturized looking, like just a little bit more of like a, that natural kind of dew that you get from the skin. I think it's wonderful. It also comes in a really nice luxurious glass bottle all around like fantastic really good like safe bet for foundation my other foundation review is one that some of you might be a little bit surprised by because I haven't done a dedicated review of this foundation but I have mentioned it in my monthly favorites before and it is the Basma Beauty foundation stick they actually sent this to me back in like November December I want to say they reached out to me on Instagram the brand sent me two of the shades I didn't know who they were but I really liked the look of the product so I wanted to give it a try apparently this product I think maybe it's gone viral a couple of times I think maybe some celebrities use it. I don't know, friends. All I want to say is that I've tried this foundation stick and I actually really, really like it. It's super nice and handy if you kind of just want something quick and on the go. If you're looking for maybe a good or cheaper alternative to like the Tom Ford foundation stick, this might be something that you want to check out. It's good to use as concealer. It's good to use as foundation. You can really build it up. You can also sheer it out. This is going to be the kind of thing that I bring with me like when I'm trying traveling in the summer, especially when my skin isn't as dry and I want something that's almost, you know, like multi-purpose and convertible. I think this is a really good foundation stick. This formula is a little bit more on like the matte or sort of creamy matte side. So if you have very dehydrated skin or more mature skin, you might want to go more towards like the house labs. But I used this all throughout December when I was traveling like for the holidays and everything, friends, when my skin was dry and I had absolutely no problem with it. And I will link down below the 
two colors that I used that worked really well for my skin tone. My new concealer recommendation is from Givenchy. This is the new Givenchy Prism Libre Concealer. I have tested this product out on my channel before and I've really been enjoying it. This is the kind of concealer that I think it will work really well for mature skin and for dry skin. Even just like normal skin, I think that this is a really good option. It has a very sort of light and serum-like consistency to it. If you like the Giorgio Armani power fabric concealer if you like the lys serum concealer if you like the kosas concealer any of those i think you're really gonna like this because it has that same sort of moisturizing lightweight serum type of texture but it still is brightening and gives me the coverage that I need. It's a really nice, really elegant concealer. If you've used up the concealers that you have in your collection and you're looking for something different to try, then I think this one is a really lovely option. Next, we are going to cover the cheek category. So we're talking bronzers, contours, blushes, that kind of stuff. I'm gonna start off with bronzers. We gotta call out the Pat McGrath bronzers. These are brand new. They are just launching this week on Sephora, the day that the sale goes live. Please keep in mind that they don't have all the shades at Sephora, which kind of stinks. I should already have a review up on my channel by now of the two lightest shades, which are Nude Honey and Naked Desire. Naked Desire, the lightest shade, is going to be at Sephora. I don't know if they're going to bring the rest of the shades maybe after the sale, friends. But what I want to say in this video is that I absolutely recommend checking these out if you guys are in the market for a new bronzer. I think you just need to consider whether or not you like any of the shades that they have at Sephora. If you're a fair like me, check out my review to see if maybe Naked Desire is gonna be a good shade for you. I do a lot of comparisons and try and talk a little bit more of like about the tone and in what ways I would wear that particular bronzer, but they are a recommendation from me in this sale. If you're in the market for a new bronzer, I think that the formula of these really, really nice. It really just depends on like what color you're looking for and if they have it at Sephora. The Tower 28 Sculptino Soft Matte Cream Contour and Bronzer. These are kind of like the non-shimmery version of the Bronzino bronzers that they have as a part of their line. They're not matte. They are a cream product. If you guys are familiar with the Bronzinos or like the cream blushes from Tower 28, it's the exact same consistency. It's just that these don't have any shimmer or glitter to them. I have the lightest shade in this range they actually gifted it to me and I demoed it for you guys and it's actually a really nice product personally I really like the consistency of the tower 28 cream blushes and so I like the consistency of this one as well I like to bring up this contour because I think it is like a good more affordable alternative to the Tom Ford shade and illuminate all the colors that they launch they're pretty suitable for more of like a contour which you never really got from the bronzino product that they have in this line which is more warm, very shimmery. You can't really use that for contour. So if you like a good cream contour and you're looking for something that's maybe a little bit more affordable than like the $90, however much it is, Tom Ford one, I think that this one is a good alternative. Next, we have more cream products, quite a few cream products on this list actually. And that is the Rare Beauty Bronzers and Cream Blushes. Now I know that these are not new products, but Rare Beauty did come out with new shades. I already reviewed the new lightest shade of the cream bronzer stick and the two new shades of the cream blushes or the liquid blushes, I should say. They're technically liquid blushes. The new shade of the bronzer stick, which is called Bright Side, it's really great if you wanted something that was a little bit more cool tone. The bronzer sticks from Rare Beauty they're really, really nice formula, and they're a little bit more affordable than a lot of the other things that are at Sephora. I think that is one of the reasons why Wear Beauty has been so successful. The packaging is really beautiful. The formulas are really nice. I think that the price point is really good. Not everything from Rare Beauty is like my absolute fave. You guys will know the lip tints. I thought they were nice, but they weren't like so nice that I needed to own them compared to a lot of other things that I already have. But the bronzer sticks, I think absolutely beautiful, good for bronzing and also contouring. Just depends on the shade. If you're fair like me, check out that review. And then the new shades of those blushes, my Goodness, they come in the shades Virtue, which is kind of like a peach, like a nudie peach, and then the shade Worth, which is called a True Rose. They're both so gorgeous. They're so pretty. I would have to say Virtue is probably my favorite, and that's just because you guys know I love like the peaches and the bronzes and the browns, so I tend to use that one a little bit more. And I told you guys in my review, I think that they 
are a pretty good affordable option to the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wands. They're very, very similar once they go onto the cheeks. I really like both products, but when you look at the price point, the Rare Beauty ones are literally half the price and they're just as beautiful. So I highly, highly recommend both of these products from Rare Beauty. In fact, I'm definitely gonna get at least one more shade of the liquid blushes from Rare Beauty if I can snag it. They sell out a lot and it takes a while for them to come back in stock. So I'm crossing my fingers that I can get one of the shades that I want in the sale for myself. Speaking of the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wands, that's also a recommendation because I absolutely love them. I know they're very expensive, but I still recommend them. If you really like a shade from Charlotte Tilbury, definitely get it in the sale because they're expensive and at least now you can get maybe the 10 to 15 to 20% off. Charlotte Tilbury doesn't have that many sales and especially with newer products like that, you might have to wait till, you know, like a Black Friday or something to get like even 20% off. So this is a good time to take a look at them. I think compared to the Rare Beauty one, Ones, the Charlotte Tilbury ones, just kind of testing them out on my hand and on my cheeks. They do have a little bit more lasting power. They kind of grip the skin a little bit more. So especially if you have maybe trouble with your blush fading throughout the day, maybe you have more oily combo skin, I do recommend checking out the ones from Charlotte Tilbury. The other ones that I recommend, which aren't new, but they're new to Sephora, are the Glossier Cloud Paints. Another product that is so, so similar to the Charlotte Tilbury ones, and they are a lot more affordable. I really like the colors of the Glossier Cloud Paints. I have a Glossier review where I kind of demo them for you and talk about some of my favorite shades there. I have all the shades of the Glossier Cloud Paint. They're so, so good. I highly recommend checking out the shade Dusk. It's a really great basic nude shade, and you can mix that shade with any of like the brighter, more vibrant shades in that line, or maybe even some of the brighter, more vibrant shades that you might have from Rare Beauty and it instantly like neutralizes the shade and makes it a little bit more approachable and wearable so you can kind of create custom shades. So I definitely recommend checking the Glossier Cloud Paints out as well. I have one more, one more cream blush recommendation. I can't stop. I love blush guys and it's the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Blushes. I got one of these in the shade Jubilee. It's kind of like a beautiful warm terracotta so, so good. Ugh, maybe I should get another one in the Sephora sale. I'm trying to limit myself, friends, and not just buy things because they are new. But these are really nice blushes from Danessa Myricks. These blushes are really good if you want a cream blush and you kind of want that natural look, but you don't want something super dewy. Maybe you have you know, oilier skin, or maybe you just don't, maybe you're kind of like intimidated by cream products, but you like the look of the cream products, this might be good for you because it's a little bit more of like a cream to powder. They're very long lasting. And what I really like about the Danessa Marks blushes is that the shades are just so fun and poppy. Like, I don't know, guys, like I like I like a little bit more color, something interesting. If you already have a million cream blushes, this might be a good product to take a look at because you get some more pops of color, something a little bit different. I like, but I don't necessarily need like 30 shades of rose and peach. So I really like the color selection in these blushes as well. Now let's talk about eyeshadow palettes. I'm very excited that some of my favorite luxury eyeshadow palettes that I've been talking about for the past couple of months are finally available at Sephora and you guys can save a little bit on what are pretty much overpriced eyeshadow palettes. But hey, we love luxury, I love luxury, and these are my favorite ones that I've reviewed for you guys that are available at Sephora. The first one is Tom Ford Forbidden Pink. Oh my goodness. I know, I know, it's basic, it's basic, but a lot of you out there, that's kind of what you're looking for. You want something that's safe if you're gonna spend $90 on a palette or at least like $90 minus the 20 or 15% off. It's still a lot to be paying for an eyeshadow quad. So I wanna make sure it's gonna be something that actually works really well, that's gonna look good on a lot of people, a lot of skin tones. And I think Tom Ford Forbidden Pink is one of those perfect quads that I can recommend to someone who's a Tom Ford lover, but also to those of you out there who don't have a lot of Tom Ford palettes. And a lot of you tell me you're looking for your first or second 
Tom Ford palette. This is a great one to look at. This is in the Creme formula. It's a new formula that came out last year. It's different from that wet dry formula that Tom Ford does in a lot of his iconic palettes like New Dip and Suspicion and Honeymoon. This formula, it's a little bit creamier. You're getting shades that are like true mattes and true shimmers as opposed to everything being that kind of like soft satiny shimmer that you get from the wet dry and the tones in this palette they are neutral but they have a little bit of like a rose undertone which is why it's called forbidden pink it also comes in this super duper cute limited edition like barbie pink packaging i like it i think it is such a good palette i have a full review of it if you want to see a demo and swatches and all that good stuff i'm very impressed with this palette it's definitely one of my favorites from tom ford and it might be my favorite one in the creme formula. Next we have Tom Ford Electric Cherry. Now this one is in the wet dry formula so it's gonna have a different texture and sheen to it compared to the Forbidden Pink. This one also limited edition just like Forbidden Pink and you get this beautiful cherry red limited edition packaging. See the theme here? This is a good one if you're like you know what Sophia I already have a lot of like neutral palettes. This is a good like pop of color. It doesn't come across as super red at least on my skin tone. It does have a little bit of kind of a pinky undertone to it, but it's a nice like break from the rest of the things that we're seeing out there, the pinks and the neutrals, etc. If you're someone that likes to play around with a little pop of color, I think this is also a really good palette from Tom Ford to take a look at. Again, out of the new releases, this is one of the more unique ones that I have from Tom Ford. And once again, I already have a review of this on my channel. Now, what I am not sure is coming to Sephora for the sale are the new Tom Ford summer palettes. I just posted that review for you all over the week. I know a lot of you guys are interested in those quads. I will let you know, you know, follow me on Instagram, subscribe to my channel. I will let you guys know the instant that I see these pop up on Sephora. Sometimes the seasonal limited edition stuff from Tom Ford shows up at Sephora and like sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it takes a really long time. So I'm really not sure about that friends. I've gotten a lot of questions. So I wanted to mention that in this video. And then my third and final recommendation for eyeshadow palettes is the Dior Mitza palette. Once again, another sort of like seasonal limited edition release. It's not going to be around forever. This is for all of my pink lovers out there. I know. So Surprise, surprise, another pink palette from Dior. And this palette, I feel like when it first came out or when we saw the sneak peeks, a lot of people were saying they didn't like the look of it. They weren't really sure about it. And then I feel like as more people bought it and more people tried it, at least with my subscribers, so many of you have reached out to me and told me that you love this palette. So many of you have told me that you bought this. You really, really like it. I think a lot of people are actually really enjoying this palette. You can use it. I showed you in my review. You can use it both on your eyes as an eyeshadow palette. You have a lot of options here, both sort of soft tones and then deeper tones. And then you also can use it as a face palette. So you can use the shades as blush, as highlighter, and the longevity, especially as a blush, is so, so good. I also really like the animal print packaging on the outside. That is super fun. So if you are in the market for a Dior palette, if you wanna give Dior a try, this is a pretty good value because you're getting more shades in one. You know, maybe you've always kind of been interested in Dior, you like Dior, but you don't really like those small five pan palettes. A lot of times I wish I had maybe one or two extra matte shades in there to do a little something extra with my look then this is a good option. And then finally, we have lips. I've got two recommendations in the lips category. I know guys, I, I really limited myself here. These are the things that I like the most. The first recommendation I have for you are the newly reformulated Dior Lip Maximizers. This is some of my favorite lip glosses. These are honestly the ones I reach for the most now. I like my Pat McGrath ones a lot as well, but these are the ones that I kind of reach for every day, especially because a lot of them, they're very like sheer and sparkly. They kind of go with a lot of different looks. And I really like the way they bring out the natural tone of my lips as well when I've applied them. And even after they have worn off, I noticed that like the natural rosiness of my lips has been brought out because they are plumping. If you don't like plumping, then you might not like these, but 
I really like the tingle. I would say the tingle probably lasts for about 20 or so minutes, but I think that these, they just look so good on the lips. Whenever I put one of these on in my videos, people are always asking me like, what is on your lips? I really like the ones that have a little bit of sparkle because I think even after kind of like maybe some of that plumping effect has worn away, you still have like the shine and sparkle on your lips to kind of create the illusion of a plumper pout. You know what I'm saying? Dior has launched so many gorgeous new shades in this line. Literally all of them are so, so good. Not all of them are at Sephora, but Sephora has a fantastic selection. And y'all know on the Dior website that they're not having any sales on there. So you're not gonna be able to get the ones on the Dior website on sale. So pick them up in the Sephora sale. I would say my favorite one that I wear all the time is Hollow Lavender. It just kind of goes well with any kind of neutral look, any kind of pink or lavender look. A lot of the brands this season are launching the, those pastel shades like the Chanel release, the Guerlain release, all of those eyeshadow palettes go really well with Hollow Lavender, but I know that Shimmer Hazelnut is another one that's super popular. Literally, they're all good. You really can't go wrong. And lastly, I'm cheating here a little bit. This isn't a new product, but it's one of my all-time faves, and I noticed that they have some new shades for spring. These are the YSL Rouge Volupte Shines look they've got a new barbie pink color a beautiful hot pink for spring and summer and i gotta try this color i'm gonna be getting at least at least one of these in the sephora sale i think these shades they might have launched about a month or two ago so comment down below if you've given them a try but i wanted to put these on your radar they also have new shades of the ysl candy glaze and i want to point out this particular shade that you could only get on the uk websites before and it is called cacao no boundary this shade is so good one time i posted an instagram photo with it and you guys were like tell me the shade tell me the shade and they didn't have it available at sephora or at any us retailers and now it's available at sephora cacao no boundary i'll put it in the description box there's a couple of other really pretty shades as well but i wanted to point out the hot pink from the rouge volte shine because i'm gonna be getting that one and then the cacao no boundary from the candy glaze i thought i would end this video by pointing out a couple of products that i haven't tried because they are brand new maybe they're launching during the sale or maybe they just came out and i'm kind of looking at these products to maybe pick up in the sales. I thought we would kind of finish this video with just some thoughts, almost like a will I buy it, but at the end of this video. The first product that I'm taking a look at are the Armani Beauty Luminous Silk Blushes. I think a lot of you want me to review this product, so comment down below and let me know. There are going to be, I think, four shades at Sephora. And I said in my past or yes a while back that I wasn't going to be reviewing these, but I think I might actually pick up a shade or two in the sale given that they're going to be in the sale. And there's not that many things that I'm gonna be getting, right friends? Cause I've already like reviewed a lot of this stuff. So if my budget permits, I am looking to pick these up. They look very smooth. The colors look very wearable. The colors are pretty neutral, but this is another thing to pay attention to that is going to be launching during the sale time. Also the new NARS Talc Free Laguna Bronzers. I've heard that these are pretty good. I think I'm gonna pick these up in the two lightest shades. I wanna do sort of like a new bronzer video for you all because I've been picking up a lot. I've got the Pat McGrath ones on my face today and the new NARS ones look really nice and the lighter two shades look really nice and they actually come in minis as well so I might get like one in a mini one in a full size so like save a little bit of money but that's another thing to take a look at friends also the Guerlain terracotta highlighters and the terracotta foundation I didn't pick up the foundation guys because it's not for dry skin, at least that's what I've been hearing. So I haven't picked it up. The highlighters I've heard are also really good. So that's something to look out for as well. I don't think I'm gonna pick up the highlighters only because I have so many and I just got that new one from Dior, but wanna put that on your radar. There's also the new Bobbi Brown dual ended eyeshadow sticks. I think I'm gonna get maybe one of those to kind of try them out. They look super duper beautiful and I don't have any other eyeshadow sticks from Bobbi Brown. I like the fact that it's kind of like a two in one. And if I'm gonna pick up any other eyeshadow sticks, I kind of want it to be during the sale because I already got a lot 
from Hourglass and Victoria Beckham. And then finally, two other products from Tom Ford. Again, pricey, so maybe good to check out during the sale that I haven't tried yet. Well, one of them technically I have tried. It is the Tom Ford Soleil de Faux fragrance. I did smell this once at Saks before it launched like weeks ago. They had like a little secret tester of it and I smelled it on one of those little like fragrance cards and it smelled really, really good. But I don't think I got to try it on my skin because I was trying out Tom Ford Electric Cherry, which actually is really, it's a really good fragrance if you like cherry scents. I decided to pass on that, but Soleil de Faux is another one that I'm going to be looking out for. I'm probably going to go in store and maybe give that a try. The last thing, the second thing from Tom Ford are the new Tom Ford liquid lipsticks. I think I'm going to get at least one of these. The shades look so beautiful and bright and vibrant, exactly what I like. There's a couple of nude shades that are really beautiful. I like liquid lipsticks. I don't mind a matte finish. I don't need everything to be super satiny and hydrating. And I like matte lipsticks that are long wearing as long as they don't get crusty and weird as long as they wear evenly I really enjoy those so that's just a little sneak peek friends of some of the things that I'm looking at in the sale whatever I pick up I will do a haul video try and get that up very very quickly but I wanted to cap off this video with those few extra thoughts. All right, my friends, those are all the recommendations that I have for you today. Stay tuned this week. Hopefully I'm trying to get up another video with more of those, like I said, oldies but goodies, some of my like all time holy grails at Sephora, things that are not necessarily new, but are just super, super good. So make sure you are subscribed and look out for that. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and sound off in the comments down below. What are you planning on getting in the sale? Anything that I mentioned in this video, anything else that you think I should have included in this video, definitely let me know all of your thoughts. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.